Hi folks, this is Rick Joyner. I'm with Bible Study Company. My wife and I are doing these quick little studies. We plan on starting a study of Exodus sort of in a podcast, but I wanted to do this little quick video of um, what I call a quick study. And Mary and I have been studying Exodus and we're using Dr. Baruch Corman's methods from loveisrael.org. And these methods have literally opened up the Bible to us in a way that we would have never described. We're just now doing a podcast that should be up here in the next few days that'll explain how Bible study company got started, but that's not what I'm going to deal with here. Um, as you can see on my screen, I'm dealing with um, Exodus 24. Now, really quick background. Uh, we've watched the people come out of Israel, or out of Egypt rather, and actually be start to become a nation. So they leave, go through some trials and temptations and complainings, and you guys know the story. The thing is, they arrive at Mount Sinai uh, just before what we would call Pentecost, and they also get the law from the Lord himself spoken directly to them in their hearts. And then they asked Moses to have God not speak to them, which to me is very sad because I want God to, to, to speak to me, but um, I also understand that it causes quite a stir in your soul. And I want to back up just a hair, sorry to go down a rabbit trail, but we're studying scripture through the lens of finding out what pleases the Lord and how to live a praiseworthy life. We're not talking about performance-based stuff. So we're not trying to do performance-based anything what we're trying to do is find out what God's purposes are for our life. So this week, Mary and I were doing this really quick study, and we've been, we, we saw in Exodus 19, the purpose for our lives is really to be in a relationship with God and to be a kingdom of priests. Now, people will look at the law being given and look at it from a standpoint of these are all these different things that we have to do, and we can get into... Um, legalism, performance-based stuff. That's not what I'm going to talk about today. If you remember back in the very beginning of Exodus, they were making bricks. They were in slavery, not only to the Egyptians, but they were, they had to take care of their own families. They were forced to worship uh, other gods um, that the Egyptians had. Plus they had their own faith and the country was kind of slipping away from the Lord and he had a promise that um, he would come and rescue his people, but it'd been 400 years, although they did have prophecy that would talk about this. So anyway, the big thing is, is we're here now um, at Mount Sinai getting the, the 10 commandments or the 10 statements. Now, the interesting thing that's happening here is Mary and I were looking at this and praying about it because that's one of the tools that you'll learn is praying over scripture and asking the Lord what he's trying to share because sometimes it just doesn't make sense and rather than read over it we want to um, you know just skip by it and we don't want to skip by anything because this is something that God gave us so we're at Exodus 24 the law was given at 20 then it shows some reflections about how this would look if you were walking this out you would for example take your neighbor's donkey back to him and so by the way there's an interesting reflection if you go to Matthew uh, 5 and look at that compared to uh, Exodus it, the Lord deals with the heart but um, the Lord now is calling up uh, Mo Moses and the 70 elders and a a Aaron and his sons up in just a little bit to the mountain. But first they do a sacrifice for the Lord. And there's an interesting dynamic going on in the first couple of verses here about who's going to worship where. And Moses is going to worship 
near the Lord rather than the 70 elders. They'll be at a distance. The interesting thing to, to Mary and I is, and Mary pointed this out to me, was uh, Moses had this really close relationship with God. And I, we don't know any of the hearts of people. We don't want to read into anybody's lives. But could it be, and that's the thing you're going to find out about, us is we ask questions. Could it be that they didn't have the same type of relationship? These are the same people that asked the Lord not to speak to them in Exodus 20 and then speak to them. They're going to be going up to the mountain, but they have to worship at a distance. So it's an interesting dynamic. So we want to be a people who are wanting to have that uh, connection to God. But anyway, as we get down here, they make a sacrifice, they sprinkle it on everybody, um, everybody agrees to the new covenant. In fact, they, they say twice they're going to. Uh, so once they do that, so again, the Lord speaks, calls them up to the mountain, and mountain is always the government of God. Uh, that's, a, that's the symbolism if you run that through all of scripture, which you can do quite nicely with uh, Bible study company. But anyway, they... In verse 9, it says, Then Moses went up with Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and uh, 70 of the elders of Israel. The interesting thing is they saw the God of Israel, and under his feet there appeared to be a pavement of sapphire as clear as the sky itself. And sapphire looks like heaven. So here is the Lord's feet on sapphire, a pavement of sapphire. Now let's look at this really quickly because this pavement is really interesting. We can look at pavement as being in order. And one of the things that Dr. Baruch says is that the Holy Spirit is a God, um, is, is order. He brings order to God's kingdom. And just like in the, in the beginning of the world in Genesis, and it was kind of chaotic, he brought order to that. So we can count on the Holy Spirit giving us order in our life. But here's something very interesting. That pavement, let's consider it just an order, an orderly way, and it's blue reflecting heaven. So we have a heavenly way to walk. That's kind of what Mary and I were taking away from this, but there's something even more exciting. This word for pavement, if we go into this, is bricks. So these are ordered bricks, but this is the same word that they used to make the brick in Exodus. So they had to, they, they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. And all their service wherein they made them serve was with bitterness. So here's the thing. They had to make brick, wood, hay, stubble, clay, water, sweat of their brow for other people. And here God is showing them his feet and a pavement made of bricks, but heavenly bricks. So he gave them the law and gave us a way to walk. And Mary and I were so excited about that. And we kind of were in praise to the Lord because he's given us his law, even though, and you can call it the 10 commandments, you call it whatever. We can't keep that law, but through Christ who, um, came into our lives and rose us and we rose with him and the law now the holy spirit helps us keep it but if we can keep our eyes on the lord and and listen to him and follow this path that he's laid out his own feet are on these bricks if you want to call it we'll have heavenly lives rather than or he will have heavenly order in our lives rather than than the brick and mortar struggle of our regular life. And um, I think that's an exciting thing to grab a hold of. There's probably more that I, that we could go into, but we were so excited about that and seeing that. And this is one of the things that 
we have loved about studying scripture, especially together as a husband and wife. And again, this is a quick study. It's it's not any of the the future podcasts that we're going to do, but if we can do a periodics of these, of what we're seeing and get folks excited about it, that's our main goal. So um, please join us. Um, the podcast, as I said, will be up here soon, but we want to get to um, uh, some of these quick studies. So let us know what you think. And we just want to thank you very much for attending. Blessings. One thing I do want to bring up uh, as we close this out is the fact that um, we can bookmark this if we want. One of the things that touched me very deeply that Mary brought up, and it says they saw God, they saw the God of Israel, and under his feet there appeared to be pavement of sapphire. So let me wrap this up. He brings order to our lives. It's a heavenly order. And the cool part is his feet are going to walk with us. And I know for Mary and I, having his presence in our life has meant so much to us. I can't even describe it. So this journey isn't isn't worth it unless his presence there. And that's that living water. So I just wanted to add that in there. Thank you for joining our quick study and uh, join us for our other podcasts and such. Thanks very much, everyone.